In lesson 3.9, differentials, we'll begin our study into the idea or concept of the differential unit. That is, a unit that is so tiny that it represents an almost infinitesimal uh, amount of space. Uh, we'll use these differentials to try to approximate uh, certain functions within calculus, and we'll also see how differentials are great approximations to actual differences, which in the past we've always uh, referred to by delta some variable delta x or delta y. Well, with differentials, we're going to use a different notation that's uh, dx or dy, and we'll see how those two things are related. Furthermore, we're going to take a look at propagated error. That is, how a little difference at the beginning can end up being a huge difference at the end. And we'll take a look at a couple examples, including one of shooting a laser beam at the moon, and then uh, an even more fun and exciting example of a cube. Just a cube. But we'll see how it all works out. Anyway, before we get into these differentials, let's take a look at one quick example where we're going to use a tangent line to try to approximate a small difference of values in a graph. Let's go ahead and take a look now. So here in example A, we're given a function, which uh, you see here in my graph in the dark red, and we're given a tangent line to that function at the point 2, comma 1.5. Uh, you can see that point... Uh, which is about right there, let's say. Now, what we're going to try to do is come up with the equation of this tangent line, which we will call t of x. Once we have the equation of that tangent line, what we're going to do is we're going to see how closely that tangent line approximates its original function at values very close to the point of intersection. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how this works. First off, uh, we need to find the equation of the tangent line. Uh, the easiest part of that equation to find would be the point. Uh, of course, we're going to use the uh, standard formula y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity m, uh, or rather x minus x sub 1. And of course, we already know uh, what x sub 1 and y sub 1 are because that's given with the point. All we need to do is find out the slope of this tangent line. So how are we going to do that? Uh, it's actually not too bad. We're just going to differentiate our original given function, which is uh, 6 times x to the negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that here. Uh, 6x to the negative 2. So if we differentiate that, uh, clearly we're just going to end up with negative 12 over x cubed. No problem. Now, if we want to evaluate this at the value x equals 2, uh, what we're going to find for our slope at this point um, is actually just going to be negative three halves after we simplify. So where do we take it from there? Uh, well, we can plug that into our slope, uh, that is our m, and if we work all this out, what we should find is that the equation of our tangent line, t of x, is actually going to equal negative three halves x, uh, that's going to be the uh, slope part, and we would have a y-intercept of four and a half, 4.5, or nine halves, if you will. Uh, you can do the algebra for yourself and find out that that's the case. I'm not going to run through all the steps. Uh, this video is probably going to be long enough anyway, so there we go. Uh, now that we know the equation of our tangent line, uh, what's going to happen when x equals 2? Well, clearly our original function uh, is going to be 1.5. That's given in the problem. That's our point of tangency. Uh, but if you plug 2 into our tangent line equation, well, you'll also find that our y value is 1.5. That only makes sense. That is the point of tangency. Both our original graph and our tangent line share that point. So it makes perfect sense that they would have the same y value. But let's creep just a little bit in the positive x direction. Instead of being at 2, let's say we're at 2.01. Plug that into the original function, and you'll find that we have a y value of 1.485. What happens when you plug that into the tangent line equation? Well, uh, rounded off, uh, you get 1.485. Now, this looks very, very good. These two values appear to be exactly the same. Now, be aware, they're not exactly the same. Uh, if you run it through your calculator, you'll see that there's some decimals that come after it uh, that we've truncated. But to the thousandth decimal place here, uh, the tangent line is very, very accurate to our original graph. Uh, let's just go a little bit uh, to the left in the x direction, 
And uh, let's take a look at 1.99. If I plug that into my original function, what I'll get is 1.515. And if I plug that into my tangent line, I get 1.515. In other words, the point that we're trying to get at here is that at values very, very, very close to 2, that tangent line is a great approximation to the original function. Now, you might be wondering, why do we need an approximation? Why can't you just plug the value into the function? Well, we'll find out later um, that sometimes the function isn't given, only its tangent line is. Or we might find that uh, plugging a value into the original function is just so unwieldy that we really don't want to deal with it. Tangent line provides a great approximation. But what happens when we go a little bit further than just 1.99 or 2.01? Let's see what happens there. Let's go to 2.1. If you plug that into the original function, we get 1.360. And what happens when we plug it into the tangent line? Well, we're not going to get exactly the same thing. In fact, we're going to get 1.35. So we're off by 100th. And that makes sense. The tangent line at some point is going to go away from the function. And it looks like it's already started to happen here, just one-tenth of a unit away from the point of tangency. Let's see what happens over here at 1.9. There, our original function has a y value of 1.662. Uh, but if you run this through the tangent line, you'll get a value of 1.65. So again, you notice that they are beginning to diverge just a little bit. So what's the whole point of this? Once again, in values that are very, very, very close to the point of tangency, we can use this linear approximation and be pretty happy with our results. But as we go further away from the point of tangency, you see that our results begin to separate from themselves a little bit. And so our approximation is really good around the point of tangency. Well, let's go ahead and generalize this by looking at the definition of a differential. As I said in the introduction, a differential is that approximation. So let's go ahead and formalize that, and then we'll move on to some more examples. Now, I'm not going to lie to you here. Uh, while the idea of differentials is simply being an approximation of a difference isn't too bad to deal with. It's just an approximation. Uh, the actual derivation of differentials and these equations I'm about to show you can be a little confusing. And for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and draw a few pictures for you here so I can try to explain where all of this is coming from. Now, I'm going to start with this curve that I'm going to call f of x. And furthermore, I'm going to start with uh, this x value, which I'm going to call c. Of course, that's going to be associated with this y value. If we call this curve f of x, what would be the y value at this point? Of course, that would be f of c. Now, if we take that c value and move forward uh, by some amount that I'm going to call delta x, what would be my new x value? Well, that, of course, would just be, as I said, c plus delta x. There's a change here in delta x. So what would be the y value at this point? Well, that's not too difficult either. That's just going to be f of, what's the x value here? Of course, c plus delta x. So that would be my y value at that place. Now, uh, not too bad yet. Uh, I've covered the fact that this, uh, this range here is actually dx. Not dx, I'm sorry, delta x. But uh, what I need to bring to the forefront is the idea that we're increasing by some value of y. Now, it's probably not a whole big value of y because that delta x is really small, so that delta y is probably going to be small as well. But I'm going to argue that we can come up with an actual formula for this delta y. Check this out. Uh, we're going to say that delta y is simply the difference between this y value right here, that is f of c plus delta x, and uh, it's going to be minus uh, what other y value? Well, this y value right there, just f of c. And so we have developed a formula for delta y, the actual change in y relative to the change in delta x. But it's ugly. 
it requires us to evaluate the function at our first value of x and to evaluate our function at our new value of x, it's unwieldy. It's just ugly. But what we can do is if we draw a tangent line here, and uh, let me actually make this solid. Uh, remember that my drawings are not gospel. Uh, I'm going to draw this the best I can. Uh, but here is an approximate tangent line to our curve. And so with our tangent line, uh, if we remember that this tangent line has a slope of the f prime of c, that is the derivative of the function with this point of tangency put in there, the c, uh, the slope of this line is f prime of c, what we can say is uh, we can approximate this, uh, this small change in y right here. We're going to approximate that and call that dy. Now, is dy the same as delta y? No, but it is a decent approximation. So what we're going to get is that our approximation dy is actually going to be equal to, check this out, uh, the slope of our function at c, or not the slope of our function, but the slope of our tangent line at c multiplied by the differential in x. Now, by differential in x, again, I'm talking about this right here. And I'm going to call that dx. So essentially, what this means is that delta x is equal exactly to the differential dx. All right? The change in x is the same whether I'm looking for the exact or approximate thing. I'm starting with the same change in x. However, if I'm using the actual change in y, I have to evaluate some really ugly things here. And I want to try to avoid that as best I can although we'll do that on the next couple examples. But an easier way to do it would just be to say, let me approximate the actual change in y by using the differential. And that differential is approximately equal to the slope of the tangent line. In other words, I'm moving up at a certain rate here, and I'm moving up for a horizontal distance of dx. All I need to do is multiply the derivative times the differential in x, and I get the differential in y. It's a little bit confusing, but hopefully after the next couple examples, this will make a little bit more sense. So let's go ahead and move on with example b. Here in example b, we're given an equation, which I want you to note is a linear equation that becomes very relevant in this problem. So we have a linear equation here, just a straight line, uh, and we're given this value of x equals 2 which I'm actually going to rewrite as c equals 2, because that's the location where this problem is taking place. We're also given that we want our delta x, or our differential of x dx, uh, remember those are going to be the same, and we want that to be 1 one hundredth. And based on that, let's evaluate and compare the actual change in y versus the approximate change in y. Well, let's go ahead and start with delta y. Remember that we have this... Uh, pretty nasty looking function that delta y equals f of c plus delta x minus f of c, all right? Essentially, we're just looking at the actual y value after the move and before the move. Uh, in other words, we could look at this as uh, delta y is going to be f of c plus delta x. That would be 2.01 minus the y value at 2. All right, so no problem there. How's this all going to work out? Uh, well, if I plug 2.01 into my original function, uh, 2.01 times 2 and then plus 1, uh, looks like that's actually going to be, what, 5.02, I believe. And then if I plug 2 into our original function, I'm just going to get 5. So what this says to me is that our actual change in y is equal to two one-hundredths of a unit. And that makes sense. Uh, since we have a slope of two, when I move 0 0.001, should I not go up 0 0.002? That seems to be what the slope tells me. Well, let's see uh, all that work being done. Let's see how the differential would have looked, the approximate change in y. And remember that our differential equation is simply the derivative at c multiplied by the differential in x. So do we know what the derivative of this function is uh, when we plug 2 in for x? Well, the good news here is that y prime is just equal to 2, no matter what the value of x is. 
So it looks like what this is going to say is just 2 multiplied by dx. And remember, dx is our change. And what is that going to tell us? That tells us that our approximate change in y is also 0 0.02. Wouldn't you agree that our approximation was excellent for this given function? Well, to be honest, it should be, because this approximation makes use of a tangent line. And what's the tangent line to a linear function? Well, it's just the, uh, the original function itself. So it makes perfect sense that our approximation is equal to our actual distance, our change in y. However, that will not be the case in example c, because in example c, we're going to be dealing with uh, a curvy function. Uh, to be honest, it's a function that we don't know uh, the function value of. So we're going to absolutely have to use differentials for that. But before we get there, let me show you how to approximate function values using differentials, and uh, that'll prepare us for example C. One of the best uses for differentials, remember those are approximations of differences, so one of their best uses is to help us approximate values of a function after moving forward a certain amount. Uh, to show you how to approximate function values, uh, what I first want to do is bring you back to the definition of the derivative. You remember we covered this back in chapter one, and it looked something like this. It was hideous, but hopefully it made sense back then because we're gonna make use of this now. So here is our formula, our definition of the derivative. I'm gonna make a small change here. Uh, since we're using uh, differentials and not this delta x stuff, I'm actually gonna get rid of our limiting agent and turn our delta x into a differential, dx. Now, notice that uh, in our approximate function values formula, what I'm actually using is this f, f of x plus delta x. So how can I get that by itself? And actually quite easily, if I multiply both sides of what I have here by the differential of x, what I'll end up with is this right here. Hopefully you'll be able to take it from here, but we'll do it together just in case. All right, so remember again what this dx represents. It's just a very, very tiny little change, an almost infinitesimal move in the x direction. So if I do my slope of the tangent line multiplied by that little infinitesimal amount, hmm, that'll give us our difference in y values. But I'm not looking for the difference in y values. I just want my new y value, this right here. So it should be pretty clear what to do here. I just need to add f of x to both sides. And then what I'll get is that my new y value is simply my old y value plus the slope of the tangent line times this little infinitesimal dx. So that's how I can approximate function values. I just need to figure out where is my point of tangency and how much am I moving from that point in the x direction. Once I know those things, it's very easy to approximate my new y value based on this formula that you see here. In fact, let me show you that it's really not that bad at all here in example C. So as promised in example C, we're given a curve that we don't have the equation of and a tangent line. Now, this seems pretty evident uh, from the picture, but let me just go ahead and make clear that in this picture, f of two is equal to one. That's gonna become very important here later. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to use the tangent line, this blue line here, to approximate the y values of this graph uh, when x equals 1.9 and again when x equals 2.04. And both times we're gonna make use of this little equation that we just came up with, f of uh, x plus delta x is approximately equal to the slope of the tangent line at our point of tangency multiplied by the uh, differential of x, and then uh, with the addition then of course of f of c, the y value that we originally are at. So uh, it's written a little bit differently than I wrote it before, uh, but you can see how addition is commutative and it's all good to go. So how are we gonna go ahead and do this? Well, we know that c equals two, that's our x value at the point of tangency. And um, what we 
could try to do is come up with the slope of this tangent line. That would tell us f prime of c. If we do that, uh, what we can find out is that uh, it appears the slope of our tangent line at all points, um, and really maybe I should say at 2, is equal to negative 1. In fact, the uh, tangent line itself, which I will call t of x, is actually just equal to negative x plus 3. You can tell that for yourself. There's our slope and our y-intercept of the blue tangent line. So uh, in our first uh, go-round at this, we're going to have, again, that c equals 2, and that delta x, or uh, in this case, I could call it the dx, the differential of x, uh, if we're trying to find 1.9 here, f of 1.9, we can say that the differential of x is simply negative 0.1. If we add these together, 2 plus negative 0.01, uh, that's where we get this 1.9. So what we can say is f of 2 plus negative 0 0.1, which is just another way of saying f of 1.9, is approximately equal to f prime of c, which we've already determined to be negative 1, multiplied by the differential of x, which we already found to be uh, negative 0.1, that's right here, uh, plus f of c, which is why we define this at the beginning of this example. So that's going to be plus 1. Now, if we work this out, what we're going to find out is that f of 1.9 is approximately equal to, what is this going to give us? Well, if I do my math correctly, uh, that is going to be 1.1. Now, take a look at the graph. Does this make sense? If we're a little bit to the left of 2, would we expect our graph to be higher or lower uh, than our original value at f of 2? And of course, because the function is decreasing, when we go to the left, the actual function is going to be just a little bit higher. And according to this, it's going to be approximately one-tenth higher, in fact. And so there is our approximation for f of 1.9. Now let's try this again for f of 2.04. We're going to run this in pretty much the same manner. Uh, we're going to start with c equals 2. That's our point of tangency. Our differential this time is going to be positive. In fact, it's going to be positive 0.04. And of course, if we add those together, that's where we would get that 2.04. So let's go ahead and work this out. Uh, f of c plus our dx, or delta x, if you will, uh, since they are equal, it's going to look like that. And that's approximately equal to, let me go back to my uh, uh, function right here, this approximation. So the uh, slope of our tangent line is negative 1. This time, our differential is 0 0.04, and we're just going to add that to our y value when we started. And if we work all this out, of course, what that's going to mean is f of 2.04 is approximately equal to, uh, again, if I do my math correctly, I should get 0 0.96. And that does make sense, because as we inch just a little bit uh, positive along the x-axis, our function does decrease. And here we see that uh, our approximate value of f of 2.04 is 0 0.96. That is the actual value uh, along our tangent line. And remember, as we said earlier, that our tangent line approximates the function. So this might not be the reality of the situation. There's no way for us to know, since we don't know the, um, the definition of this function, rather. Um, but we can certainly approximate it using that tangent line. So there's one example of how we approximate uh, function values with the differential. Now what I want to do is I want to show you about propagated error. But before we move on to example D, uh, let's take a look at what propagated error actually means. Let's shoot a laser at the moon. So here's a little diagram I have drawn uh, of the Earth, which is on the uh, far left of your picture here where the point is and the moon, which I've drawn as this giant, beautiful circle. Now, just a couple uh, pieces of information before we actually shoot our laser at the moon. I should tell you that the average distance of the moon from the Earth is 384,400 kilometers. That's a long drive. And the moon itself has a radius of uh, 1,737 kilometers, as I've drawn in this picture. Now, if our goal is to shoot a laser directly into the center of the moon, it's pretty obvious that we could be off by it just a little bit and still hit the moon somewhere. But how many degrees would we have to be off 
in order to miss the moon completely. Well, of course, this is just a simple trig problem that you could have done back in pre-calc or maybe even Algebra 2. Um, you see, uh, I have my theta marked, and uh, that theta marks where the Earth is and how many degrees we might be off. If theta equals zero, in other words, if we're not off at all, then we will hit the moon directly in the center, and that's beautiful. But let's be realistic. Uh, we are going to be off a little bit. So could we be off a degree and still hit the moon, maybe two degrees? Um, of course, if we're off by too much, we'll miss the moon completely, and that's what I want to know. How many degrees would we have to be off in order for our laser to not even hit the moon? Well, if you do a little bit of work here, I've gone ahead and uh, set up our theta relation using the inverse tangent function, uh, as you see right here. And if we go ahead and run that through the calculator, being very careful to be in the right mode. If you're in uh, radians mode, it's all screwed up. But put it in degree mode, uh, run that inverse tangent function, and you find out that, boom, we can be off by at most one quarter of a degree. That's insane. If we are off by more than one-fourth of a degree, even though that's a small little bit and almost insignificant, multiply that over the distance to the moon, and you see that we're going to be off by well over 1,700 kilometers. So little errors can propagate into big, fat mistakes. And so that's why when NASA builds uh, aircraft or anything like that, they have to use the utmost precision and be extremely careful with their work. Well, we're going to do something that doesn't require so much precision necessarily. We're going to go ahead and take a look at a cube. And we're going to measure the edge length of that cube. And assuming that we're off a little bit, because all rulers are, we'll see how that affects the surface area and volume calculations of that cube. So here we go with our last example. And so here we go. You've probably learned in physics, hopefully, that no measurement is really exact. It's only precise to a certain amount. Well, in this particular problem, we're measuring the edge of a cube, and we find the edge of the cube to have a length of 12 inches with a possible error of three hundredths of an inch. It could be that we're using a wooden ruler in humid conditions, and so the ruler warps. Uh, we could be using a steel ruler uh, in cold conditions, so maybe it shrinks. Whatever the case, whatever measurement device we're using, uh, we're given that we have a uh, possible error of 0 0.03 inches. What does that tell us? That tells us that the differential of the edge measurement is going to be equal to 0 0.03 inches. So we're going to use that differential uh, throughout this problem to try to approximate uh, the maximum possible propagated error in the volume and then the maximum possible propagated error in the surface area. So let's go ahead and start with the volume. I'll do this in red, since volume's in red. Uh, one thing we know about volume for sure is that the volume of a cube is simply equal to an edge length cubed. Easy enough. Now, what we need to do is differentiate this, and that's because uh, our function approximation uh, requires the derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and write v prime is simply equal to 3e squared, and uh, we'll start with that. Of course, since we're differentiating uh, with respect to e, I'm going to go ahead and throw a de in there as if we were doing this implicitly. Now, this isn't too bad. Uh, let's just go ahead and work this out. Uh, the derivative of volume, uh, if we plug things in here, uh, we measured the edge length to be 12 inches. So I'll put my 12 in for e, and our differential for e, or de, we already said is 0 0.03. So if we work that out, what we're going to find is that our maximum uh, possible propagated error is actually 12.96 inches cubed. In other words, if we measure the volume exactly uh, versus if we measure the volume uh, with our possible error here, uh, we could be off by a maximum of about 13 cubic inches. At the end of this video, after we wrap it up, uh, I'll display a thing for you that I've created that shows us um, the maximum possible propagated error versus the actual error uh, if our ruler is uh, 0.03 inches too long versus if our ruler is 0.03 inches too short. 
Of course, you could find this out on yourself. Um, instead of using 12 as our edge length when computing the volume, of course, we would expect our volume to simply be 12 cubed, uh, inches cubed. But if that weren't the case, imagine if we, uh, if the ruler was too long, we'd actually end up with 12.03 cubed inches cubed. So it could be up to that long. Um, I shouldn't say that long, that, uh, that voluminous perhaps. Um, and of course, if we did 12.03 uh, cubed inches cubed, that would actually give us 1,740.992 uh, cubic inches. How does that compare to 12 cubed? Well, 12 cubed, uh, that would simply be, let's see here, 1,728 cubic inches. You can subtract those for yourself and see that that is within our parameter of our maximum propagated error. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you could go back again and instead of doing 12.03 cubed, try subtracting 0.03 and do 19.97 cubed. See how that, or not 19.97, but rather 11.97 cubed. See how that one works out for you. But with that, let's take a look at surface area. Of course, the surface area of the cube is simply the six faces of the cube. So six times E squared. And if we go ahead and differentiate that, uh, we'll get that the derivative of surface area is actually just 12e dE. And again, if we go ahead and plug in some values here, what we'll find is uh, 12, our edge length we also found to be 12, and our differential in edge, in edge length was 0.03, and that would give us a uh, maximum propagated surface area error of, uh, let's see here, I have this written down, Looks like we're actually going to get uh, 4.32 square inches. Now, again, this uh, thing that I'll show you after we wrap this up, we'll show you what would actually happen if we found the surface area of this cube and the ruler was 0.032 too long, or if the ruler was 0.03 too short. And what you'll find, of course, you could do it yourself, but what you'll find is uh, both are within the maximum propagated error. So that's pretty cool. So, uh, lesson 3.9, differentials. This was not an easy lesson. Conceptually, of course, we're just doing approximations. But the reality of the situation is we're having to do derivatives, we're having to find tangent lines, all this good stuff. What I need you to remember is that delta x is the exact change in x, while dx, the differential, is the approximate change in x. Now, because we're dealing with functions, and this is calculus of one variable, we're always going to have our approximate error in x be exactly equal to our exact change in x, so that delta x and dx are always going to be exactly the same. However, both of those are going to have an effect on the y, and that's where the interesting part comes in. Remember that delta y is the exact change in y, while dy, the differential in y, is the approximate change in y. How do we do that? Well, remember that we're essentially using a tangent line to approximate the exact graph or the exact values of the graph. And remember that that tangent line is actually a very good approximation for values very close to the point of tangency. As we step away from that, the line begins to diverge from the function, and uh, really we should choose another tangent line for far away values. From there, we went ahead and used the differential to approximate function values using a very cool, fun, and exciting formula that I gave you earlier in this video. Uh, and then we used dy to look at propagated error. Uh, we looked at shooting a laser at the moon and then uh, finding the surface area and volume of a cube. So that's propagated error. So it's a lot of stuff to uh, think about here with these differentials. I will warn you that differentials become extremely important as we move into chapter four. Uh, remember that the differential, uh, when we get to chapter four, simply represents a very, very, very infinitesimally small distance. And that's going to become very important uh, as we move on throughout the course. So remember all this stuff. Uh, make sure you keep referencing your notes uh, as you proceed with the 3.9 assignment. And good luck.